So, um, I figured I would show off just how easy it is to get started with um, Powery and um, Android development when you're using a dev container that I've developed. So, first things first, we need to have um, VSL installed on um, on um, Windows and you should have docker uh, set up uh, easiest way is docker desktop um, so that you're ready for um, developing inside a dev container but you don't need any other special uh, dependencies on your host system um, I don't even have like look, I, I don't even have um, rust installed in um, VSL so the first thing to do let's create a project and pass alpha because we want to have a um, mobile capable project for simplicity sake we're just gonna go with a, a vanilla template yes we want that as you can see I don't have all the dependencies installed now we're going to open our new app As you can see, nothing fancy here, just a very basic project. Then take a look at my repository. All we need is this folder from it, and I usually just do this, currently at least. Um, I may figure out a, an easier way to get it started. If I got it my way, I would get this into an official repository at uh, Tauri. But for now, we're just gonna do this. Copy the content um, into dev container uh, JSON and copy the Docker file into the Docker file. I'm not gonna go through all of this immediately. We, we can go through that at the end. Um, but now, all we do is open folder in dev container. And of course it fails. And of course it fails again. Why is it failing? fail. Why are you failing? <sighs> so if this happens, this tends to be the easiest way to fix it. Just kill ESL and restart Docker Desktop. Mm -hmm. opening container there we go I'm pretty sure the reason it failed was just because I've built it before in another project um, so what happened now was it went a bit too fast for you to see it but it actually built the docker file I built this image before, which is why it was so fast. It actually takes like 15 20 minutes on most computers uh, to build this uh, container. But um, as you can see, second time around, it's very fast to open. And all we need to know now is that this has RAM PNPMI because we specified that in dev container JSON, which we only really need to run once. 
once. I'm considering removing this part. I don't want to rebuild right now. And then we can open. Um, first, we can close this one. We open two terminals. And first, we just verify that everything works by running a regular build. If this happens, that is blocking, it's because of Rust Analyzer. Then what you do is Rust Analyzer stop server. And now, for reasons unknown, this is probably going to keep blocking for a while. I swear to god, I hate that plugin with a passion. It's absolutely necessary to develop um, Rust on VS Code, but unfortunately it causes these kinds of issues. There we go. Alright, we're off to the races. Inside this dev container I have set up Mold, uh, which is a faster linker. It only applies when you're using um, your basic desktop target, so it won't speed up Android building. Uh, but for this, uh, this is actually like several times faster than what it would normally be. And um, yeah, there's some stuff here I can probably remove. I believe I can remove like these two lines because, as far as I can tell. Um, the Tauri project handles downloading these manually and they don't want these versions that I have installed. So I, I'll experiment with removing these parts as well to make the build a bit faster and the container a bit smaller. We're shipping a custom version of the Tauri CLI and the customness here is just that we're using the next branch and the debug version and it's just because that for some reason fixed it for me. I could not use pnpm Tauri dev. Um, that would just keep crashing. Um, but using the next branch seems to work for unknown reasons. And yeah, this is basically just a dev container with Android, Mold, Tauri CLI, complete with an emulator, which I'll show off in a second. And here we go. Zero dependencies installed on the host system. Just run the dev container and you're up and running with a Linux version of um, Tauri on Windows. Um, the next part I'm gonna show is how to use the emulator. So, down here we have a command. Um, this, is, this readme isn't properly structured right now, but basically if you scroll down all the way down here, running the emulator inside the dev container, just copy this command, enter, boom. And just wait for it. Meanwhile, we can initialize. Uh, this is just a performance thing. It, the emulator doesn't perform super well when ran inside the container, but it's actually it's usable. It's, it's not great. Um, we'll initialize the Android project. As you can see, it found the Android toolchain and everything. Once you see the Google logo, uh, you can start the dev command. Um, that, by the way, is not you have to run it at that point. It's just that's like the earliest point you can start running it. So let's see how long it'll take us to get this up and running.
Um, again, the emulator takes a long time for it to start. It's it's not great, <laughs> which is why I'm um, investigating uh, using other methods. Uh, currently, I have an idea for getting it to work with your physical device. Actually, I've already fixed getting it to your like installing the app on your physical device and on an emulator running on your host system. Uh, the issue right now is that um, the front end doesn't get forwarded properly. So I'm gonna have to figure that one out. Probably what I'm gonna have to do is set up a port forward on the host system because when the, when the app runs, this is no idea why we have to running right now. There's some issue with uh, when you exit the Tauri dev command, it doesn't always clean up processes, which is something I'm definitely going to have to look into at some point, but for now, just know that this is a thing. And what you can do, this is the improper one. They um, said you can do that, but these are the exact same process. Like being a close device. This is weird. Because this is the, I believe, process identifier of the, these processes. And um, they should be different, but they're not. Hmm. Oh well. Um, anyway, I'm looking into port forwarding and stuff like that so that you can use your physical device. I can already install it on the physical device, it just won't find the front end because that gets exposed on localhost whereas uh, your device expects it to be on your network IP. Not a huge deal um, in terms of difficulty fixing, it's just annoying mostly. This by the way is an issue I talk about in the repo. Um, I will try to poke someone in Tauri and see probably Hammer uh, what what he thinks about just adding this part just by default because this will ensure that Kotlin builds for the proper target uh, or at least for the same target that you specify that Java is building for. Just set up dev container development, copy the dev container folder, and there are options here. I'm gonna make a complete rewrite of this readme at some point, but uh, read it through. It has some nice little info. Uh, if you intend to use this setup, it is quite unproblematic though, so I, I don't believe you. Just copy the dev container and trust me that it works. And if it doesn't work, poke me on Discord. This process, by the way, unfortunately does not seem to be all that sped up by subsequent builds. I don't know if it's insufficient caching or what can be done about this, but this process is just always slow. So the actual Android building we're doing now won't be much sped up by using it on your host system instead. It's primarily the speed of the emulator that would uh, be massively improved. There we go. Streamed install. Just gotta wait for a few seconds for it to react. Installed. Starting. Installed. There we go. And there we go. The keyboard, by the way, does not forward properly to this emulator, but we can use that. It's great. Come on, emulator, you can do it, and there we go. You have been greeted from Rust.
fully functional emulator. And as you can see, all that we did, of course we can't see it now because I wiped that, but all we did was run this command with a dash dash alpha after it uh, to set up the pro project inside VSL. Important that it's actually inside the VSL file system. Otherwise, you're going to have a massive uh, performance drop. Uh, if you're on Mac or Linux, it should be fine because the performance drop is related to different file system types, and Mac and Linux are by default um, the proper file system. Then you just have Docker desktop installed on your computer. Open it, uh, open VS Code, open in folder in container, then we ran the emulator and the dev command. Done. And yeah, that's roughly what I had to show you today.